Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Battle Breakdown. Today we'll be examining the Battle of Coruscant, and I want to get right into it, but before we do, just a couple of things. First of all, I've changed how I color ships in this video. I used to just use black for all of them. Let me know if you think this looks better and if it's easier to see. Second, there's no way I can really illustrate the scale of the Battle of Coruscant without some sort of supercomputer. So when you see one ship here, imagine several several hundred. Finally, as I did for my video on the Battle of Earth, this is less a look at the actual minute tactics of the Battle of Coruscant because it was a prolonged campaign, but rather a chronology of important events and an examination of strategy. So let's get started. The CIS planned their attack during a major Republic event where much of the government's political elite would be on planet. This obviously left Coruscant as a major target, but there was no serious worry. For one, the planet was always a target during the Clone Wars, and the massive Coruscant home fleet was stationed in orbit, ready to protect the Republic's capital. Coruscant was also deep in the galactic core, and it was believed that if any Separatists moved towards the planet because of the presence of Republic stations among major hyperspace lanes, they would be identified. However, in a very Palpatinian move, the Confederacy struck using a previously unknown hyper route. They collected much of their fleet in the deep core and launched a surprise attack on the Republic. Before we go into the actual attack, let's take a second to look at the home defense fleet. I've analyzed fleet composition during the Battle of Coruscant in prior videos, mostly in reference to various works like the Republic Commando series. If you're interested in how I get the numbers I use today, I'll link to that video above. Anyway, although depleted due to the need for ships in the Outer Rim, the home defense fleet would have still included thousands of vessels, primarily Venators, Carrix, and Dreadnoughts. Striking with surprise, a massive Separatist fleet made up largely of Munificent Frigates, Recus, and Destroyers, but also with some Providence Dreadnoughts and Lucre Hulk battleships, was able to catch the Republic fleet unprepared, destroying a large portion of the Defense Force before they could activate their shields or weapons. As the fighting continued in space, the Separatists launched a raid against the planet proper, moving their fleet under the not yet activated planetary shield while the surviving Republic ships attempted to form a defensive screen in order to prevent more Separatists Separatist forces from reaching the planet's surface. The CIS began targeting orbital assets, well, also where the Republic reinforcements were almost certainly on their way, planted interdictor mines in an effort to slow down responding ships. Scramblers were also used to mess up communication, although the Republic would eventually bypass these technologies. At this point, it's important to mention that the Separatist Navy was being led by General Grievous, who, unlike Dooku, was not aware of Sidious's motivations or that the CIS was ultimately designed to lose the war. So he, along with basically everyone other than Palpatine, was probably surprised when the first wave of Republic reinforcements arrived. As we learn in the Order 66 novel, the ships here were brand new, some never before seen. I'd imagine that this is where some of the first Imperial ships, including the Imperator, Tector, and Victory 2 Star Destroyers, made their official debut. On the surface, Grievous was successful in capturing Palpatine and escaped to space. However, the fighting was very heavy at this point and the CIS were no longer dominating. Fleeing to his command ship, Grievous was pursued by several Jedi. However, a large group of buzz droids launched from a nearby Lucre Hulk was able to stop the pursuers. Safely at the Invisible Hand, Grievous broadcasted Palpatine's capture to the Republic, causing massive demoralization across the galaxy. However, any sense of a Separatist victory would be short-lived. Almost immediately after, the tide of battle was turned as the various open circle fleets arrived before Grievous was able to flee. With this, the Coruscanti planetary shields were activated, preventing a Separatist retreat. The CIS were now on the defensive and moved to protect Grievous' flagship, the Invisible Hand. With the open circle fleet came famed Jedi Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. With the help of the 501st, the two heroes moved towards Grievous' cruiser, evading droid fighters on their way. As they boarded, the Garlara, a Venator Star Destroyer, believing that Palpatine was already rescued and off-ship, broke through the CIS screen and engaged the Invisible Hand at point-blank range, seriously damaging the flagship. On board, the Jedi defeated Dooku, who was killed, and Grievous, who retreats. However, Home Fleet Strike Group 5, led by none other than future Imperial Lorth Nita, launches another attack on the Invisible Hand, damaging it and causing it to fall to the planet's surface. With Palpatine rescued and the Invisible Hand destroyed, the Confederacy have failed all of their primary mission objectives. 
they collect Grievous, the planetary shield is either destroyed or lowered, and the fleet escapes through hyperspace. This spells the beginning of the end for the Confederacy of Independent Systems. They gambled with a lightning attack on Coruscant and lost. However, if we're being honest, the Confederacy really had no chance here. They were designed to fail. The Battle of Coruscant was supposed to scare the citizens of the galaxy and move the Republic towards further militarization. Palpatine's second goal was to move Anakin further towards the dark side and prepare the young Jedi to replace Dooku as his apprentice. I'd say he was pretty successful in that respect. The Confederacy's major mistake, and you can hardly call it a mistake because there's no way they could have prepared for this, was underestimating how long it would take the Republic Navy to respond to the attack. Obviously, Palpatine's secret fleet slowed down CIS progress, then with the open circle fleets, the numbers were just overwhelming. But that's just my perspective and how I see the battle. Let me know what you think. I've definitely made some assumptions here, and I want to hear if you think differently than me. All of that, as well as any ideas you guys have for future videos, down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, as always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.